Thank you for inviting me. I'm super excited to be here. Um, I don't know if you all know what's happening in Chile right now. So I'm, I'm just going to talk a little bit before my, my talk. So uh, that's what happening, what's happening in my country right now. And it's been reported by several agencies that it's something that it's uh, systematically happening. Police forces are violating human rights. And that's me on the middle. I'm a volunteer, so we, res we rescue wounded people on the battlefields, and not really battlefields. You can, you can, say, you can tell it's, m it's me because of my DEF CON t-shirt. <laughs> <laughs> so we ended up uh, using not a lot of protection, but after we were receiving a lot of wounded people, we had to use more gear. For example, shoes, shields, helmets. I have a, a Israeli mask against the gases they're throwing. They're throwing all the time. Every everyone, even if you're helping somebody that is wounded, they will gas you. So some day, some information, additional information. After 50 days of demonstrations, around 3,500 3, wounded people. They already started uh, 1,300 criminal proceedings. Uh, around 100 a day rela re related to sexual violence. And 352 people with eye injuries. 21 lost their uh, one eye, and two of them are fully blinded. So the things they are using is uh, pellets, pellet bullets. One of this is one uh, empty shell. I had a I had a long trouble to get them here because <laughs> it, it's not easy to explain why you're carrying empty shells. <laughs> so yeah, 22 people got killed in these demonstrations. So a little bit about myself. I don't know if you ever hear about my name in DEFCON. Anybody? Anybody here went to DEFCON last year? This year? No? You? What, what do you do there? Yeah? Cool. So I, I am a computer science engineer. Uh, that's a career that I really liked, so it took me nine years to get out of the university. Um, I started giving a Sky Talk about the same, the same talk last year. Um, I will talk more about that later. So one of the first things is that I hacked 3,000 3, Wi-Fi routers in Brazil in the biggest ICP of the country. And one of the things that I do, I do free classes of a lot of stuff related to hacking. Um, for example, I do classes related to CTF pen testing, and I teach all people about computer science. And I have a company with a pretty clever name, InfoSec. <laughs> I couldn't find another name. So I do classes in an open and free university in Chile. Uh, that's called Universidad Recoleta. Um, so this year I did two workshops, one in China um, about Wi-Fi hacking, and another one in the US. I'm pretty new in this field. I've been here working with security for only one year and a half, so it's pretty good for me that I went there. So first I need to give you a little bit of context about this talk for you to understand what happened. So I work in the Chilean health system, which is 20% private and 80% public. So the public system has around 40 million patients. And where I worked, we had 2 million patients, which is, which is a lot. So this is the structure. You got the Ministry of Health, and then you got 29 health services. And uh, bef below the services are hospitals. So how macabre is this talk? 
Macabre is a really difficult word for me to pronounce. So, so after DEFCON last year, the, I received messages that the police will wait for me at the airport. Uh, the minister said that they needed to shut down all the services for three days because of DEFCON. You know that hackers only work in DEFCON, DEFCON time. That they will sue me, they actually did. And when I was giving the talk, I asked if government officials were in the room, and they raised their hand, and they actually recorded the talk. I don't know if you know about Sky Talks. You can all record in Sky Talks. It's, uh, I'm sorry, I'm sweating a lot. Um, and they recorded the talk, the talk and they sent it to me. And that means that I needed to report it to Sky Talks because that is not possible. Because otherwise you're going to risk a sue like me being sued. Um, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to talk about five, four stories to make you understand why I did what I did and what was my day-to-day -day work. So this is called Very Secure Web Service. So this ministry had, they ask reports for every institution. That means that all patients in Chile needed to send this report. I mean, not all patients, but information from all the patients in the country. So they ask you to use a uh, web service that encrypted files, right? But it was not deployed, it was not published. They will send you the binary, which is weird, right? They send you the service binary. And then you have to load files to FTP server. So then you can understand how bad, the, how bad this was. And I was like, mm, that's weird. So then I thought, let's test the security of this thing. So I was pretty naive, you know, I was new in the, in the field. So I tried to crack 3D, 3DS, 3DS, yeah, right? And then I realized that it was easier than that because uh, they, they had a .NET application, which is pretty normal in the public institutions. They always use Microsoft stuff. So I reversed the code, and I found the key. <laughs> but at least the key was good. So then I reported it to the CSO of the ministry, and he said something that had happened to me many times. Why were you doing that? <laughs> and I said, well, my position has assigned pen testing function. Because I, I created my own apart my own department, so I had I could define what I was going to do. So he said, "What is this pen testing? Where's that written?" So I sent him the official document, and one friend always told me that you have to propose fixing fix how to fix things, right? So I said, "I have some ideas how to fix the problem." And then he said, nothing. <laughs> I don't know if you, cree cree means something in English, right? It's the same, no? Well, in Spanish, it's cree 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 means nobody says anything. So, history number two. I don't know if you know what a electronic health record is. It's a, well, this is a software that stores electronic health records. And <coughs> this system had over a million, million patients which is a lot. So they store exams, diagnostics, a lot of information. And in the public sector, they use a lot .NET. Everything that is Microsoft, and it's Oracle, and that is expensive, they use it. So they were, they were paying like $500,000 $500, in licenses for Oracle database with only 60 gigabytes of database. So they had 18 developers. They didn't have uh, CVS. Well, at least not, not true. They had 800 version in Word files. 
So they will create a new word file every time they change the code. So this was, this was like three years ago. So they did an audit and one of the guys from the ministry said, what about security measures? And they say it was secure because he had a login with five digits, <laughs> a password with five digits. So I was there and, and I couldn't avoid it to raise my hand and say, really? Five digits, that's your answer? And that, got, that almost got me fired because they say that I was giving friendly fire to them. Yeah. So at that point, I was like, this is like a really, it's like a bizarre, like a bizarre world, like everything is backwards. So, story number three. Imagine that you go to work and you don't have Gmail. Then you try Google search, doesn't work. But Facebook is working, which is good. Twitter, working. News media, also working. All of them. And for a month, so they send me home to work from home. And actually, I didn't know what I was doing, so I have to Google a lot. So um, I keep asking why it is, it is happening. How come the internet doesn't allow me to Google? So they, the IT manager told me, I haven't, nobody, I mean, I didn't give you this, this email. So he printed an email and he gave it to me, and this is a picture of it. So he said that they blocked Google because from Google you can get to forbidden sites, forbidden websites. So they put Google in the same category as games, mega bloat, rapid share. So what happened is that they have a limit, like a 200, 500 megabytes per day. So if you got there eight in the morning, you could Google a bit and then you, don't, you couldn't connect anymore. So they blocked YouTube, Google Maps, everything related to Google. So again, I was like, I couldn't understand it. I mean, I think many of you will be in the same situation. And this is a big company. It has a contract of, uh, it's around $3 million per month. That's what the government pays this company. So now that you kind of understand the context, I could, I could tell you hundreds of this type of, type of histories. So let's go to the juicy part. So, um, so what, hap what happens, or what happened, is that they created a national wide network without any virtualization. So you know Chile is a really long country. It's at 5,000 kilometers from north to the southern city. So, so it doesn't make any sense to have a unique network. So I was scanning the network, just finding some IPs that I needed to check, and I found 100, 150,000 devices. Because I guess villains were not invented at the time, 2014. So I couldn't understand why that worked. I thought that I had a super computer, super privileged account. But so I was feeling this way for six months because I couldn't really understand why this was working. So what were those devices? So some of them had chair folders. Some of them had chair folders with public read privileges, and some of them, and this is a good part, they had public and read, read and write privileges. Even the, one of the servers that my unit had, it was completely open with writing privileges. Which actually somebody deleted from, I don't know where, they deleted some projects inside of it. So some computers, you know, like people, just random people, they had a lot of pictures and cat videos and some of them were servers with a lot of a lot of information that I could never that I could never check it, check them all because there were too too many terabytes of info. But the thing is that some of them they had sensitive information about patients. 
So, uh, yeah, well, I know a lot about South Africa because of Trevor Noah. I read his book. So, yeah, I learned about Julius Malema and Jacob Zuma and a lot of funny stuff. So, I sent an email. You know, my boss told me you should report this to to your boss or your boss's boss. So, I sent an email uh, pointing the addresses and what could you find on those addresses. So, the first one you could find exams, data patient, and the second one you can find uh, people with mental health issues or so you could find name, diagnosis, and you could find also blood donors forms so you can see like blood type or and the last one was you could find pregnant women with uh, HIV which is really bad in Chile because we have a special law to protect the identity of people with HIV. So uh, they never reply to me. They just send a reply to my boss, you know, like defending themselves, saying uh, all those IPs are not from our institution. And I said, well, I, I didn't even check for that. So I found <laughs> even more stuff, like the entire hospital had all chair, everything. Like, for example, La Florida Hospital, which is a big hospital, they have everything. The second one is the biggest in Chile, and they had everything in one folder, everything you can find. <laughs> then, one funny, the funny thing is that they have a, an open, um, an open, how do you call that? Um, SVN. Uh, it was completely open, so you can read the, the source code. And in the source code, you can find database connections. And I discovered many, many resources they had, servers, uh, webcams. And one of the best things that I found, it was this very organized guide, and it had a, 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 a document with everything that you can imagine all the IP addresses, all the passwords, all the servers in just one file, which is pretty good for a hacker. Um, yeah, so this was the answer that I received, nothing again. So I was just getting tired of it, you know, I was trying to, who, had, who should I talk to? And I was taking a, a course, a, a class with the, with the ministry people from the IT department. So I had the chance to talk to them, like, I'm the guy who reported it, the issue, have you, did you receive it? And she said, yeah, we know, we're fixing it. But nothing happened after that. And I only received complaints by my, by my boss, he said, Somebody told me that you went to talk to this person and ask you ask her about what they're doing. And it's like I jumped the hierarchy. You know, I, I so they actually conf they said don't do it anymore. So after ten months, no answer, no changes, no responsible, and not even a thank you. And you all know that hackers were pretty sensitive, right? <laughs> I am at least. So, uh, what can you do if nobody cares? So that got me thinking a lot. And actually, a friend of mine, the same guy who told me that I always offer a fixing, he said, you should do something. So, who likes this kind of stuff? The press. So in Chile, we have a research group they work in Panama Papers, so they're really badass. And nowadays, they're the most respected media in Chile. The bad thing is that they gave me a lot of things to do. For example, they asked me to send, they asked me to put a journalist on my computer doing the same things that I did to get this information. So it's not easy. There's a lot of cameras, there's a lot of people looking around. So, luckily, I was f 
friend of the security guards. So they all knew what happened, but nobody said anything. So I had to find for sensitive information. And the other thing that they wanted to test if like I could do the same in different places. So I have to talk to people to allow the journalists to go to their offices. And one of the guys that I asked this, he sent an email to the security officer, officer of his place that we was working on. And, <laughs> and I thought that we're gonna get caught, you know, that somebody's trying to get private information and they say it was not possible. So, uh <laughs> well, I ended up getting the information, but we were really, really scared at the time. So how did I do it? So my first try was like, I don't know if most of you, most of uh, geeks or hackers or people in the computer field, sometimes they want to have everything, every movie, every game, at least before. I don't know now, new generations. So I try to copy and store everything. But some nodes of this great network were really slow. It would not give it more than 100 kilobytes per second. And a lot of computers were turning off at 6 p.m. and a lot of servers also. So I was copying them and they just like disappeared and tried again. So I only managed to copy 300 gigabytes out of 50 terabytes that I discovered. And I was really scared of firewalls, you know, that somebody's gonna see the logs and gonna see an IP address copying a lot of information, but no, I think nobody checked the firewalls. So my second try is that, okay, get rid of all this information, just copy file names. That's what I did. I only copy for file names, and then I grab for sensitive information. So they, they, we agree to publish the um, article when I was traveling. So kind of a, a less Snowden thing kind of thing, because I was, I knew that I was the guy pointed out. You know, you were the guy, the the one. So that gave me time to prepare myself to get an alibi or. Credible, credible story. So it was really simple. This is not a, to a technical talk. It's a shell script that I will test for Samba privileges. And if I had privilege, enough privilege, I, was copy, I will copy the server name. And uh, this is one example. IP address name dot txt. And now, now we need to get serious about it. Seriously, <laughs> because uh, this is this is some these are some examples of what I found. So in only one server, I found twenty three thousand forms of blood donors. So you could you could see all the information: name, uh, ID, ID number, and also email, <laughs> which is good, cell phone number and a lot of information that is protected by law in Chile. It's protected by the Constitution and by two different laws. One that is related to public health, I mean, to health records, and another one that is that protects privacy. So another example, 10,000 x-rays, again, with the name of the patient, and Another one it was uh, DICOM files, which is a standard for images in exams and things like that. So I found um, 1,500 mammographies, and again, you can find you could find the name, the ID number, and everything. So how exactly how I did it is just like I wanted to count first how many files you could find and only doc files and PDF. So there were roughly four million files. So I didn't count for Excel files or any kind of, for example, uh, there were a lot of databases, a lot of backups of the databases. So you, could, you didn't have access to the database, but you got access to all the backups. So one of the things that I did, for example, is like check for pill, which is the after-day pill or emergency pill. I don't know how you call it here. 
So those people, they were really organized. So they have like very long names to every file. So usually they were giving this pill to raped women. And inside the file, you could see everything, like ID number, the reason why they got the pill. So 120 files, just pretty, pretty simple commands, right? So then I had to look for a VHV, VHH, I don't know, HIV is in English, right? Some of my talks are in Spanish and Portuguese, so sometimes some, uh, no, no, actually, this is in Spanish because the name, the name of the files are in Spanish, right? Yeah. Um, system, and the thing is that this network has around a hundred thousand employees, and a lot of companies that provide services, and they also had access. So one of the things that I thought about doing this leak, it was related to how many people have access and they are taking advantage of this information. Um, so it says it's the worst security problem. I don't know which sound is this computer or somebody, yeah? Okay. So more press. So they actually took six hours to fix the problem. Because what they did is that just they just block the main firewalls. They just block the ports. Because it's uh, like shared folders is the main way of sharing information inside between people, between employees. So the bad thing about this solution is that if you were a client of those firewalls, you could still see everything. It's just that you couldn't connect to another firewall using those ports. And so consequences. <laughs> I'm going to ask you for, what do you think was a fine, how, how big was the fine to the CTO? It's a little more than zero. So 10% of his salary for one month. <coughs> And he, ha and he also sued them because he said that he wasn't really the CTO because he had a temporary contract, <laughs> which is true. If, you're, if you don't have a proper contract, you don't have the responsibility. So panic. It created panic. After that, nobody wanted to give you any information at all. Not even names, nothing. So they say, no, we cannot share any information of because of what happened. And I said, but I did it. <laughs> I mean, I know that you can do it. It's just that now everybody is like freaking, it out, freaking out. So she was, the minister, she was called to Congress to explain what happened. And it was all bullshit. It was all lied. Like, no, it was just, they were just names, nothing important. So since congressmen, they don't know anything about computers or Let's not even think about hacking. They just believe that. But the good thing is that I, my, I had the chance to create my own department. My boss told me, he protected me, and he said, well, you can create your security department. And he was the first one, especially like related to security in health. So after a while, the new president came along. The right wing president that we are facing now. And I got fired the first day. It was 10 a.m. in the morning, they sent an email to fire me. They really hated me because of the new director of this institution was the same guy in, chair, in, chair, in charge of the computer, of the IT department. So they were always like, we hate this guy. He's always, he's always giving us trouble. So they gave no reason. They fired me by email during my holidays because I knew I was going to get fired, so I, I, I couldn't lose my holidays. <laughs> <coughs> the, I was talking to somebody yesterday. The, the way that I knew that when I, they were going to fire me is just that they had default passwords 
and every and 50% of their email accounts. So when somebody told me that somebody said that they're gonna fire you, I just got to their emails accounts, and they were actually talking how to how to fire me in the worst way possible. <laughs> so the thing is that they did it in a legal way. It's just that they didn't know that the Supreme Court ruled that kind of firing illegal. So I'm gonna talk about that later. So they, <laughs> the funny thing is that they eliminated my department without even telling me. So I was working on my own for a month. All my projects, I, I had pretty cool projects with Job Hawking, which is one of the most important universities related to health. And I sued them for, they actually fired me and then they wanted me back. <laughs> but then I said, I mean, I'm already suing you. If you f hire me back, I won't be able to do it anymore. So I wanted to know more about it. So I did an investigation about the investigation. So I got 1,200 pages. I have to pay $50 to get. Um, but I really wanted to know what happened, why nobody did anything. So they gave me this huge pile of paper. And I just read some of the excuses. So. Uh, they say that they cannot, it was possible to be to fix it, but it will have a really huge impact on the operation, right? But they didn't in six hours, so it was not true. And then they will say, they said that it was a thing related only to the employees, case by case, ignoring that there's a law and the Constitution protects the private information. It says, it's a super personal kind of a thing. It depends on, on them, not us. So the other one said, the other guy said uh, the same thing. They said, he said that it's complex to identify the shared folders. But as I told you, I did it with a shell script with five lines. Five. So, um, so they keep saying it's employee's fault, but one of the things they always say is, uh, we need to find the guy who did this. We need to find him and punish him. They, they, couldn't, they never knew it was me, because I, I was pretty good alibi. Since I, talk, since I talk a lot, my excuse was, well, you know that I talk to everyone about everything. Somebody might have heard, and they just give that information to this. And they say, yeah, well, that sounds credible. So. So the main reason why they didn't do anything at all is because, in, I don't know if you read some Spanish, I don't know if you understand anything. Well, what it says that is that after one year of email uh, problems with the email accounts, uh, they say that they didn't receive any information regarding to this problem because their, their emails didn't work. And this is an email from the company saying that, yeah, it's true. For, a, for one year, the email accounts didn't work properly. So one of the things that happened is that you couldn't receive email from Gmail. Or you couldn't send emails to Gmail because we were blocked as a spammers. We're talking about like 50,000 email accounts. Um, yeah, so th they say that the, w the worst case with this problem was the minister emails. So latest update, that happened on November 8th, Supreme Court ruled in my favor after 18 months. So they will have to pay me $25,000. It's gonna take a while, but, but at least that's finished. So you got the latest update. So kind of a conclusion. What can we uh, do to avoid the situation? Of course, everybody says the same. We need more security experts. That's difficult. And in my country, we don't have any degree is, uh, that it's uh, specific to security. I actually did computer science and I didn't even have a class r regarding security because they wanna, they are looking for doctors in hacking. It's just <laughs> <laughs> PhD in hacking, okay, five minutes. No, I'm okay. So one of the things that, that shocked me the most is that to be a security, to be a CSO, they, all, they only ask for the ISO 
27001, that's the name of it, which is pretty like nothing. That was, a, that was required for being a security expert. Uh, we have a lot of laws that they, doesn't, that they don't work at all. We need to change that eventually. And one of the things that I, in my country, at least, we have a lot of rock stars, but not many mentors. And I try to be a mentor. So what I'm doing, it's, uh, well, I told you I'm doing workshops for free. I have a lot of students working with me. Uh, it's, uh, they want to become hackers. Some of them are getting there. They went to DEF CON as a workshop instructor, which is something that I never imagined in my first years. And I have a lot of internships where we do a lot of stuff, pretty much everything. Like, what do you want to do? Radio hacking? Okay, Wi-Fi hacking? Let's do it. So this is me now. Doesn't look a lot like me, but well, that's it. Thank you.